Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, you're very welcome. My name is Dr Cat, and this is Reading the Past. Before we start, if this is your first time on the channel, you may want to go and check out another video that I made before you watch this one because this is sort of a follow-on from the video that I made looking at the historical and cultural context of Macbeth. So I'm going to leave a link to that wherever the cards go, maybe here. I'm gonna leave a link to that, so perhaps you wanna go and watch that first and then come back to this one. Because in this video, I'm going to be looking at a moment from Act One, Scene Five. It's Lady Macbeth's speech where she calls upon spirits to help her. So let's deep dive that particular bit of text. Raven himself is horse that croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan unto my battlements. Come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here, and fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood. Stop up the access and passage to remorse, that no compunctious visitings of nature shake my fell purpose, nor keep peace between the effect and it. Come to my woman's breasts and take my milk for gall, you murdering ministers, wherever in your sightless substances you wait on nature's mischief. Come, thick night and pal thee in the dunnest smoke of hell, that my keen knife see not the wound it makes. Nor heaven, peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold, hold. The passage begins ominously. We have a raven croaking the fatal entrance of Duncan. The raven is a carrion bird, a bird associated with death and this represents the messenger who is telling Lady Macbeth that Duncan has come to her castle. She already knows that she's planning to kill him, so for her, this messenger and the bird that she has tied him to represents the foul purpose that she wishes to enact upon her royal guest. In the next breath, she calls upon the spirits to come to her but these are not her better angels to lead her back to the path of righteousness. As we see, these are murdering ministers that wait on nature's mischief. What she is doing is an inversion of prayer. It is a ritual of evil, of demonic power. It's essentially a witch's incantation. She is calling upon these spirits, these dark malign forces, to help her commit an act that she does not wish heaven to see. But just what is Lady Macbeth calling on these spirits to do for her or to her? Well, she is asking for a full body transformation, a complete shift and alteration in herself and in her humours. She asks to be unsexed, to be filled from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. She asks them to make thick my blood, stop up the access and passage to remorse that no compunctious visitings of nature shake my fell purpose. In this, in the compunctious visitings of nature, she is referring to her menstrual cycle. She is asking the spirits to stop her body from menstruating. Similarly, when she asks that her milk be taken for gall, gall being another part of the humour, it being a bile humour. Now, I have got another video on the science of the four humours on this channel, and you may want to check that out for some additional context. But in it, I lay out the fact that there are four humours in the body for the early modern scientist. They are blood, black bile, yellow bile, and phlegm. And health occurs when those four humours are in balance. So if a person has an over quantity of blood, then they would be sanguine lazy, lethargic, and in need of bleeding either by leech or fleam or blade. Menstrual blood functions completely differently because menstruating women and their blood are dangerous and toxic to their community. 
they curdle milk, they make food go bad, they can cause cot death or deformities in farm animals. Essentially a menstruating woman is a very bad thing for her community. However, what's worse is a woman whose menstrual blood is trapped inside of her because then that blood is poisoning not only her body but potentially her soul and her mind. The womb is a very tricksy thing in the early modern mindset. I mean, they don't know much about it, but they certainly believe in the notion of hysteria, literally meaning wandering womb. So when we talk about a woman being hysterical, and it is always women, men cannot be hysterical, even now to a certain extent, that overreaction is a specifically feminine event and it comes from the notion that they believe that the womb was like a little animal that lived inside a woman and could, of its own leave, wander about the place, uh, causing a bit of chaos, essentially. A woman whose menstrual blood is not being vented when it's being stored inside of her womb, she is potentially in danger of being suffocated by her womb, being driven mad by it, or partaking in evil or demonic things because that menstrual blood has so corrupted her soul. One of the key questions when it comes to how to perform or stage Lady Macbeth in particular is just why she goes mad. It seemingly comes out of nowhere. However, if this incantation, if the spirits have come, if they have wrought their work upon her, if they've been effective and they've stopped up her menstrual blood, that access and passage to remorse, if she has not had those compunctious visitings of nature, perhaps that very alteration in her humoral makeup is the thing that has sent her mad. What do you think? How do you read this portion of text if you're studying this for your GCSEs or perhaps you're a performer or a director looking to stage Macbeth? How do you interpret these words? I'd love to hear from you. Please let me know in the comments section down below. Similarly, if there's another piece of text, either from Macbeth or any other play that you'd like me to do a similar deep dive on, please do let me know. I'm going to leave my social media links in the description boxes down below, my Instagram and my Twitter. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please give it a like, please subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and click the bell icon so you know when I've next uploaded. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I look forward to seeing you all next time. Take care. Bye bye for now.